I will, I hope, Hutamba, that mom does bring him home a delicious treat because he's been very good staying put where mom has obviously told him to wait. Now it seems as though those lions just took a couple of steps into the bushes and then came right back out onto Drakensberg Road, which is where we were earlier. So obviously what they they thought they were hearing was a lot closer, it wasn't, and Sebastian and I were actually just discussing this. As that I said to him, I said, it sounds like those kudu were actually on Torchwood. I didn't think that they were sort of between Cheetah Cut Line and where those lions were. We were quite close to the boundary. Now, I can see them moving off now, and I think the little ones are going, so we'll just hang tight with this lioness because there are some other cars in the sighting. So I'll just give them a bit of room and time to enjoy them as well. And we will watch this lovely lady groom her paws, which is another very important thing that I suppose animals have to do. They can't just go to the salon, or they you know, can't just go get their nails done or anything like that by anyone. They're responsible uh, for their own hygiene and it's important to keep themselves nice and clean, looking spick and span, otherwise they'd get completely covered in all sorts of parasites. As you can see, the behavior of lions changes significantly at night. There you can see the other lights from the other cars in the background and again we're still in the infrared. And I'm sure you see it if you've got cats at home, how the behavior changes. They go from being all sleepy and docile during the day to the smallest thing at night catching their attention and they get quite excited by it. But this is when the lions are in their prime, is in the darkness. They aren't known as the you know ghosts of the darkness for nothing. They truly are, especially with the way that they're able to move so quietly. But it has been a beautiful afternoon out here in the bush, spending time with all sorts of feline friends today. She's giving herself a good groom. Now she keeps looking back at the rest of the pride, but she doesn't seem to be too perturbed that they have started to move off. I'm sure when she feels as though she's getting too far uh, to left behind, La, 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 tongue twister there. She will eventually get up and she'll start moving in their direction, but not bothered for now. now. I haven't seen Amber Eyes yet. We know she's there, but we haven't had a good look at her just yet. I'm actually just going to turn my bright light off that I um, had on just a moment ago, just because there's some guests coming and I don't want to blind them. And, and we, we just very briefly chatted about Amber Eyes and her potential cub or her cub that she had. Now, we can only speculate as to what's happened. Maybe it is still around and just she's just moved it to a different area and she's popping back and visiting and we don't know it. Um, but until we get a good look at her and see if she's still producing milk, we won't really know. And it is sad, I really hope, I'm, I'll be devastated if she has lost that cub. It will be very sad because, you know, she hasn't had cubs before this. And it would have been amazing to see, an amazing, great story to, of course, see if that cub uh, would have made it to adulthood. But this is nature, these are just one of those things. We can't control them, we can't intervene and save everything. We've got to let nature take its course. But you know what? At least we got to see that little one. Sorry, we've got a total darkness <laughs> moment. We're still here. Uh, it was still amazing that you got to see a very quick glimpse with Ali. It was exceptional. So now that we know that Amber Eyes is indeed able to have cubs, which is quite exciting. So if this is her first litter, she, you know, it's very sad that she maybe wasn't successful again. We're just speculating. We don't know. But the fact that she's hanging around with her pride more and more often and she hasn't brought the little one out yet, you know, you have to start thinking of these things. You know, we don't, we don't ever want to admit them, um, but we can't... Um, I don't even know. It's so it's sad because I, I love Amber Eyes and I was e excited that she did have a little cub. I'm going to come back out onto the road again, I think. I'll just let her walk into the distance. So, very sad, of course, but let's keep our fingers crossed. Like I said, maybe she's just been moving uh, the little one around to different den sites, which would be quite exciting as well. But the longer she spends time with the pride and we don't see her away, we have to start realizing that unfortunately maybe w something bad has happened to that cub and it could be from another lion, it could be from baboons, it could be hyenas, it could be a leopard. There's lots of leopards lying around. If she did leave that little one unattended, something of course could have happened 
uh, or maybe she just didn't do a good enough job and that's what happens it does take practice it does take time it's a tough thing being a parrot out in this big bad world and the, the Karula's well she was one of the greatest mothers I think of all the leopards that ever lived and she did a sterling job but not everybody's as great I'm not saying that Amber Eyes is a bad mother not at all we think it's her first litter and we don't know what and I'm sure she would have done her absolute best to try and protect and to give that cub an opportunity let's keep trying to follow and see where they go but I'm going to send you across now to Ellie and I wonder what she's up to